Welcome back to chapter 11. This is our first example out of four that highlight the core key chapter 11 problem type, which is buoyant force problems. So in this example, we have um, a big chunk of iron that we have submerged in water. So this iron here is under the water, and we're told that it has a mass of two kilograms. Two kilograms. All right, so when we start to ask ourselves about forces, and we think about the last section of the um, chapter that we covered for chapter 11, we want to recognize that just like in chapter 4 and chapter 5, when we are dealing with forces, we want to draw a force diagram. So I've been calling them free body diagrams. We'll continue to do that. And we want to think about the forces that are acting on that block of iron. So the free body diagram of the iron. So right away, even if we ignored all of the chapter 11 ideas, we do know two of the three forces that are acting here. Gravity is acting straight down. Gravity is mass times little g. So 2 times 9.8, which is 19.6 newtons. And we have the rope, so there's a tension force up. Now, if we were not submerged in water, that would be it. And if we're not moving, then the tension and gravity would be equal. However, the water is here, and it is providing a force that is actually going to change the tension in the rope. The water is helping us out. It's kind of pushing up on the iron a little bit, and it will relieve the tension by a, a small amount. Because that buoyant force, so another force up that we are calling the buoyant force, that buoyant force is there because we are surrounded by a liquid that is pushing on us as if we are made of that liquid. Now, we aren't going anywhere, so we have that the net forces are equal to zero, and we are specifically looking in the up and down direction, although there aren't any overall net forces in the x-direction either. The situation here is such that we could choose either direction to be positive. There is no acceleration direction. So we can have that the buoyant force plus the tension, same sign because they're the same direction, minus gravity, opposite direction, so we get an opposite sign, and all that equals zero. All right, so so far, what we've written down doesn't have any chapter 11 equations in it. The idea of buoyant force was originated here, but in the same way that we've had really complicated force diagrams with normal forces where there's no surface here, friction, again, no surface here, other forces that we've dealt with, writing down the fact that there are three forces, two of which are pointing in one direction, one of which is pointing in another, that's chapter four kind of content. But now we get into the key big idea that is introduced in this section of the chapter. The buoyant force is equivalent to the density of the fluid times the volume that we're displacing with our object, in this case the iron, times the force of gravity, or sorry, the acceleration of gravity, g. All right, so we have that term now in place of buoyant force. We still have this unknown tension, and then gravity from our free body diagram, we've already done work solving for 19.6. All right, so now we have to recognize a couple of things. For the fluid here that we're dealing with, the fluid is the water. So we can look up and whether it's a problem set or a exam problem, we can look up the density of water and we'll learn that it's a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. The volume displaced, the volume of iron, is something that we aren't given. However, we do know that the density of iron by definition, is the mass of the chunk that we're looking at, which we do have, divided by the volume of the iron, which is what we're looking for here. 
So we can plug in numbers into those spots. We just have to look up the density of iron. So we have that iron is 7,860 kilograms per cubic meter. The mass is 2, and the volume of the iron that we're looking for is the unknown here. We can solve for it. So if we multiply both sides by that um, iron volume and divide both sides by 7,860, we can plug that back in. So let's do that now. So we have the fluid is the water, 1,000. The volume is 2 over 7860. And then our acceleration of gravity g is 9.8, the way it has been for a long time. All right, tension is our unknown still. I'm going to add 19.6 to both sides, just so it's on the other side away from the tension. And we can plug in all of that, these numbers here together to get a term that will then subtract from both sides. So all of this together is 2.5. So we're going to subtract 2.5 from both sides so that we have tension all by itself. The tension here is equal to 19.6 minus 2.5, which is 17.1 newtons. And that is the end of the problem. I want to highlight a couple of things, though, before we leave this uh, example problem. The fact that we had to go and find an unknown using densities equal to mass over volume is going to happen every single time. Pretty much any object we have in the problem will have one of these two things given, and we'll have to use this to find the other um, of the unknowns. In the setup here, it was only once we got to this part that I've color-coded in green here that we actually had chapter 11 ideas show up. We started out with just our understanding of forces, which is why this is such a core problem type to come out of this chapter. Even though it feels brand new right at the end of the semester, it is simply revisiting a core idea that we've seen in chapters 4, 5, and beyond with forces. All right, so that's our first example in full. We have several more of these buoyant force examples that we'll be working through in example problem videos. So I will see you in those next examples.